Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take you through every exam question that has been asked about completing the square. And if you want to use this document, it's all linked in the description and it's all fully hyperlinked as well. So completing the square, um, do make sure that you check out my playlist about actually how you do this. Um, and this is going to be me just kind of like going through the questions so that you can check if you've got them right. I'm not going to be teaching it in sort of full detail here. So nice, easy one to begin with. It wants us to write this quadratic in the completed square form. So what we do for this, when I start with my x squared plus 6x minus 7, we're going to deal with these first two terms. We're going to half that 6 so it becomes x plus 3 squared. Now, when you do complete in the square, you always subtract this thing being squared as well. So I'll subtract a 9, and still there is the minus 7 there that is well. So like I said, if you want to watch the full uh, tutorials of this, I've got full, um, yeah, like walkthroughs about how to actually do complete in the square. So we get x plus 3 squared minus 9 minus 7 uh, is minus 16. Now, if you expanded this, you would get your x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. So you would get the x squared plus 6x, but you'd have that extra plus 9, which is why we did the subtract 9 there. And you'd still have, um, when you have the plus 9, subtract 16, you end up with that minus 7. So this is the answer that we've got, x plus 3 squared minus 16. Okay, it wants us to sketch the graph of this, showing the coordinates of the turning point and the exact coordinates of any intercepts with the coordinate axes. So this turning point thing is the thing that means we are going to do completing the square, because that's the only way that you can find the turning point when you're doing GCSE. So afterwards, we will find about the exact coordinates, because the completed square form is also going to help us with that. So we have that y equals 2x squared minus 8x minus 5. And what we're going to do for this is we're actually going to factorise the 2 out of the first term so that we have 2 brackets x squared minus 4x. And we can just leave that minus 5 hanging out at the end. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to complete the square on this like inside bit. So x squared minus 4, you're going to half that 4 so that it becomes a 2 and you're going to subtract minus 2 squared, so you're going to subtract a 4, and of course you've still got that minus 5 at the end. So when we expand these brackets, we get 2x minus 2 squared. We then have 2 times minus 4, which is minus 8, and we still have the minus 5 at the end. So the completed square form is 2 brackets x minus 2 squared minus 8 minus 5 is minus 13. So this is going to tell me something, that my turning point to begin with which is probably my easiest bit to do, my turning point that I have here, the minimum that this is going to be is minus 13, and it's when this part is equal to 0, because the smallest this thing can be is 0. This thing is 0 when this thing is 0, when x is 2. So the turning point is when x is 2, and that gives us the minimum value of y, which is minus 13. Think about it, anything that is being squared is always going to be 0 or greater. So now we're going to try and find the ax where it has any intercepts with the coordinate axes. So one of these is going to be really easy. One of them is just going to be when x is equal to 0. Let's find out what y is equal to. Well, it would be 2 times 0 squared minus 8 times 0 minus 5. Well, that's going to be a 0 and a 0, so it's just going to be a minus 5. So one of the coordinates we want to do is 0 minus 5. And now we're going to say, what if y is equal to 0? Well, if y is equal to 0, I actually think it's going to be easier to use this equation that we've got here. So I'm going to say 0 equals 2 brackets x minus 2 squared minus 13. I'm going to do my sketch up here at the end, by the way. I'm going to put the 13 on the other side, and I'm going to divide it by 2. And that's going to give me my x minus 2 squared. Now I'm going to square root both sides so that I get the square root of 13 over 2. And there's a positive and negative version of that is equal to x minus 2. And my last thing is to add that 2 to the other side. So I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2 is equal to x. So that's going to correspond to our two different roots, um, which are going to be drawn on the graph here. Now it's going to be a kind of like positive shape. And it is going to have, where did I say the turning point is? 2 minus 13. So the turning point is going to be over here. It's going to cross at minus 5. So it's going to look like this kind of shape for a sketch that we've got here. And so we're going to show the coordinates of this turning point. The turning point is 2 minus 13. We're then going to say that this point here is minus 5, or 0 minus 5 if we wanted to write it as a coordinate. And then I'm going to do the roots in like a different colour. So this root that we've got over here, 
Maybe I should have marked that that one was 0, 5. This root will be the 2 minus root 13 over 2. So that is my x coordinate is 2 minus root 13 over 2, and the y coordinate is 0. And then this one would be 2 plus root 13 over 2, and the y coordinate is 0. So pretty difficult stuff there, but it is for five marks. So we did the turning point from the completed square form, we did the y-intercept by making x equals zero, and we did the x-intercept by making y equals zero. Tell you what, I'm gonna just put a line in between there to show that these all are kind of like separate parts of the question that we've got. So we have got the graph with the turning point at two minus 13, the intercepts at zero minus five, two plus root 13 over two, and two minus root 13 over two as well. Okay, here is a sketch of a curve. The equation of the curve is y equals x squared plus ax plus b, where a and b are integers. The points 0, minus 5 and 5, 0 lie on the curve. So pretty obviously we can see that that's referring to a 5 and that bit there is referring to a minus 5. And we're going to find the coordinates of the turning point that we have down here. Well, I'm going to begin by just taking these and substituting them in and then taking these and substituting them in. So my first one is that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 5. So I get minus 5 is equal to, well, that's going to be 0, and that's going to be 0 as well. And then b must be equal to, oh, so we get minus 5 equals 0 plus 0 plus b. So b is equal to minus 5. Now I'm going to do the second coordinate, and for that second coordinate, we can see that when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 0. So we get 0 equals 5 squared plus 5a plus b, and b is minus 5. So 0 equals 25 plus 5a minus 5. So 0, 25 take away 5 is 20, so 20 plus 5a. I'm going to subtract the 20, and then I'm going to divide by the 5, so a is equal to minus 4. So now using this information, I'm going to do completing the square on this using this and this that I have here. So y equals x squared plus ax plus b, which is actually x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now I'm going to do completing the square. So that's going to be my x minus 2 squared. I'm going to subtract the 4, which comes from the 2 squared, and I'm going to subtract the 5. So y is equal to x minus 2 squared minus 9. So when I'm going to try and find out what the turning point is, it's the same logic we had in one of the earlier questions. I want this part to be here. I want this part to be 0 for what x would be. So that means that x is 2. And then when x is 2, y is the smallest thing that it can be, which is minus 9. Now, I guess, oh, I think I've actually marked this coordinate on here completely wrong, actually, didn't I? Um, this is not correct. 0 minus 5 is over here. So otherwise, there would have been a different way I could have done this. So my mistake, the 0 minus 5 is this coordinate. I can't even do basic coordinate plotting, which isn't very good, really, is it? So we do get the 2 minus 9. It didn't change any of my algebra that I did, though, as well. OK, so it says, given that um, this can be written in this form, find the value of a and the value of b. So it just means complete the square. So I am going to start off by sub um, halving the 6 and then subtracting that 3 squared, subtracting 9, and still keeping the plus 1 that's there. So it's going to be x minus 3 squared, and minus 9 plus 1 is minus 8. So by comparing it, that means that a is equal to 3, and b is equal to 8. It then says, hence write down the coordinates of the turning point of the graph. So looking at this thing, the x coordinate, when this is going to be as small as possible, when it's going to be 0, is 3. And that gives me that y is equal to the extra thing that we've got here, which is minus 8. So we've got 3, 8, and then 3, minus 8 for the second part there. OK, it wants us to write down the coordinates of the turning point of this graph. Very, very easy. I want the first bracket to be 0, which means x is minus 12. And then the y coordinate would be minus 7 for that. So it's just minus 12, minus 7. Nice and easy. OK, it then wants us to find the coordinates of the turning point on the curve with this equation, and you must show all of your working. Well, the annoying thing is the way that it's got this minus 3 here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rewrite the order for a second so that it looks like a kind of normal quadratic. So I've got my 3x squared, sorry, my minus 3x squared plus my 18x plus my 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise out the minus 3 from the beginning section. I'm going to leave that plus 9 at the end. Now, when I take minus 3 out, this is actually going to become a minus 6x. 
The reason that's going to happen is because you have minus 3 times minus 6 to get the plus 18. I'd say that's probably a very common mistake that people might make here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up some big brackets and I'm going to do my x squared minus 6x. I'm going to complete the square on that part, which is going to be x minus 3 squared and there's going to be the minus 9. And then at the end, I still have that plus 9 that I've kind of left untouched at the very end. So expanding the brackets at the beginning, I have minus 3 lots of this part. So I have minus 3 lots of x minus 3 squared. I've then got negative 3 being multiplied by negative 9, which is a plus 27. And at the end, I've still got that plus 9. So y is minus 3 x minus 3 squared and 27 plus 9 is 36. So to work out that the turning point is still going to be what is the minimum value, sorry, when is this thing here equal to 0? That is when x is equal to 3. And then the y value is that extra number that we've got there, which is 36. So it should be 3, 36, which is the right answer that we have here. Okay, that's everything that's on completing the square. It does pop up in a few other places, but these are the questions that are just talking about completing the square totally by itself. Um, if you find this useful going through all these different exam questions, please do subscribe, do like the video, and do share it with any of your friends. Like I said, this isn't me actually teaching this topic. I have taught this topic in depth if you want to understand what's going on here properly. So do go and look at some of those tutorial videos that are on my channel homepage.